Welcome to the narrated step-by-step -step tutorial for my painting, Mount Washington View. The photograph on the right was the reference and inspiration for this painting. It's a view from the top of Mount Washington in New Hampshire. While well, I often do landscapes, this one's a little bit different. A lot of my landscapes have trees and rocks and water. This one's primarily dealing with the major shapes of mountains and clouds in the distant skyline. The viewpoint is just above the timberline, so the amount of uh, plant life in the area is very limited. One of the decisions I have to make when doing a painting like this is where my starting point is going to be. Many times I'll start with a distant sky and uh, distant tree lines. In this case, I'm going to look more towards the, the softest shapes that I have in the composition and that would be the clouds. While there are techniques that would allow me to put a, a large blue sky wash down and come back and, and work into it to create clouds, that's not the technique that I'm going to use. I'm going to start this painting working wet and wet to create the cloud shapes. I began with a light pencil sketch of the major shapes on a quarter sheet of 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. The paper is 11 inches by 15 inches. Before I begin, I'll go through the colors that I use for this painting. Cerulean blue, manganese blue, royal blue, quinacridone rose matter, cobalt blue, raw sienna, raw umber, sap green, pyrrol red, and alizarin crimson quinacridone. Since I'm going to be working wet and wet, the first thing I'm going to do is put uh, a wash of clear water over my uh, work area. I'm not going to uh, soak the entire paper. I'm focusing on the area of the cloud, so that's the area where I'm going to put this wash. So I've saturated my paper here before I begin to uh, apply the paint. And here I've loaded my brush. Uh, to the point of uh, saturation. So I'm painting with a saturated brush on saturated paper. And the mixture I'm using has some cobalt blue, some quinacridone rose matter, some raw sienna. So it, it gives me a, a violet, a blue violet tone. Uh, and then I start to take it a little bit towards neutral, towards a gray, as I add the raw sienna to this mixture. So there's some blue tones some uh, violet tones and some some gray tones in uh, the mixture I'm applying. And the mixture I'm applying now has more cobalt blue while it's still the same kind of combination of colors. I've just shifted uh, the ratio of each color in my mixture. So I'm working at about a, a 20 degree angle and so my, my paper's wet. You can see the gravity is starting to pull that paint down a little bit. And I'm making some horizontal strokes to give the indication of the bottom of these clouds. And I'm going to clean that up a little bit below there just um, so it doesn't look like a bunch of individual little streams of paint flowing down. And I'm going to move to the right just a little bit because that cloud just there's little touches of the cloud that are kind of in shadow as it stretches across the sky. And there's another cloud behind that. On these clouds, as they get one on top of the other, you can kind of see the bottoms um, uh, stacking up here of the clouds, one behind the other. So if you, you can see that in this mixture, uh, the mixtures I'm using, they're, they're still staying pretty much to the to the violet, the blue violet, the little red violet, and uh, a little gray here and there. And this is a, 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 a very light middle value wash I'm putting down, but really when I dry it, it's going to be fairly light. I'm going to continue to work with that same color mixture, and I'm applying uh, uh, once again with a saturated brush. However, my paper started to dry out just a little bit and um, I'm going to take uh, a fine mist spray bottle and I'm going to soften these edges a little bit more. Um, 
the uh, if I had applied uh, some more water to this area with a clear wash it would be uh, diffusing more than what it is but I can come back in with my fine mist spray and I'm going to soften those edges just as I did when I painted uh, saturated brush on saturated paper. I want to go a little darker on the, the bottoms of these clouds. I want to emphasize that the dark shadow that's on, on the bottom, on the base of these uh, cloud forms. So I'm coming back and this mixture is more towards a gray, kind of a blue-gray tone. Um, just adding some touches of this, this color mixture and its value on the bottom of these clouds. And I'm going to put some touches of those values in these other areas and uh, including some of the smaller areas that I've indicated the bottoms of these clouds. So these clouds kind of float on top of this blue sky in this composition and it would be hard to put that blue sky in and then come back and put the clouds in. So I'm putting these clouds in first, then I'm going to come back in. I'm going to paint the, those uh, kind of cerulean blue tones around these soft shapes that I've started to paint here. As you paint, you continually need to evaluate uh, the, the development of your painting. And uh, when, when I'm working, it's, it's uh, not unusual for me to go back a couple times in one area until I really get the value or color that I'm after. Uh, in this case, I still want to stress the, the dark underside of these clouds. And um, once it dried, it was still a little too light uh, for what I was after. So now I've come back and, and put in some bolder shadowed areas. And here I'm coming in now to paint this blue sky with uh, some cerulean blue. And I'm still going to have some cloud forms in there, but um, you kind of have these these kind of gray clouds floating with the, with this blue sky as a backdrop. And it is the, the the blue backdrop of the sky meets the edge of these clouds, there are some harder edges. So. Uh, I, I started primarily with the soft edges in, in the kind of gray, fluffy areas of the cloud. And now I've come back with a cerulean blue wash, and I'm using a combination of soft edges and some hard edges. So I put in this cerulean blue wash, and then I, I spray it with a fine mist spray to soften that up. But here I'm coming in with my brush, and I'm just putting in some touches of the blue tone that have uh, a little bit harder edge to it. We're going to continue to put in this blue wash and help develop these edges that help uh, further define these clouds. And keep in mind, when I started I was working wet on wet. So that's how I created the, the softness and uh, those cloud shapes. But now I'm working wet on dry, although as I come in with a fine mist spray and soften some of those edges, any brush strokes I put on after that are, are more along the lines of wet and wet. And here I want to soften some of those edges, so I'm going to hit that with a fine mist and, and diffuse that color just a little bit. So now I'm, I'm touching my brush into the area where the paper is wet, so I get a soft edge there. These clouds have set up kind of a horizontal pattern. I, I try to you know, give the, the suggestion of that with my brush strokes, trying to keep a, a horizontal element to, to some of these brush strokes as I apply my paint. And here I've inserted the reference photos, and you you can see kind of the horizontal uh, nature that these clouds are lined up across the sky. So uh, some of this, I, I'm just making some very expressive brush strokes uh, as I go across the sky there, and then I just leave them. 
I don't I don't overwork them. I don't come in with a little brush and try and model them. Uh, I'm letting the paint kind of move around the paper a little bit. Some areas are wetter than others, um, but it's giving me the, the effect that I want of these clouds floating on top of this blue sky. As I start to get down into some of these um, distant uh, mountainous areas, it starts to get uh, more of a red violet. So I'm taking this wash here that has some uh, some cobalt blue with some uh, quinacridone rose matter and uh, just starting to, to apply just kind of a gradated wash here and I'm getting a little help by using the fine mist spray bell to soften that and let that let that diffuse down and let gravity uh, do its work This, this cloud kind of in the top right corner still doesn't quite have the dark base that I want it to have. So I'm coming back in with this uh, kind of a, a cool gray violet tone and um, just deepening the shadow on the base of that cloud a little bit. Now I'm going to start to work on uh, some of the mountainous area and uh, to do this I'm just painting a, a bit of a hard edge on the top side of it and then I'll take some water and I'll just gradate that wash down a little bit and let the let the paint just diffuse down and soften the edge as it as it comes down and take a little bit more clear water and just gradate that wash down so I'm going to do the same on uh, another shape here I'm going to change my color up a little bit. That that one that I just painted had some manganese blue in it, uh, and this one is more of a uh, a violet tone. It's some cobalt blue with some quinacridone rose matter, and again, you know, I'm giving it a a harder edge on the top side, but then quickly gradating it with clear water to to let it just disappear and not set a hard edge on the bottom side of it. From this uh, vantage point you see just the just the top edge of several mountains as they're stretched out in the distance for, for many many miles. So you don't have big peaks because you're at a, such a high level uh, with some of these and you're looking even though you're at a, a very high point you're the highest point in that this part of the the, of, uh, the country so these are all a little bit lower but not by much and um, you've got a kind of a top side view but it's a very narrow band of the the peaks that you see and here I'm switching back to a more of a violet tone kind of a red violet and just doing some more of the same where I show a little bit of the edge and then I gradate it up down and in this instance there's a, a little bit more of it you want I want to vary the, the the size and the shapes of these so they don't all look like they're just cutouts of the same thing and here again a little darker mixture here with a little darker uh, deeper blue this has a little bit of royal blue in it and um, now I'm going to take clear water and help soften that edge on the bottom side and just blot it with a tissue. Now this next area I'm going to paint is more of a valley area that you're looking down on and it's kind of a, a blue green tone so it's some cobalt blue with a little bit of sap green and just a touch of a red in there. Um, and there's an area there down there that there's a lake so as you look at this vantage point you're, you're seeing these distant uh, mountain tops this very slender uh, edges that that are coming one over the other but then you can still see down on top of this valley that's still extended out there a ways but there's just a little bit of a lake there that I'm going to leave that light tone to, to represent uh, the lake that's down there. 
and it's not a, a solid painted shape um, there's some water in there and I soften that up a little bit let it gradate within the sh shape because from this vantage point things get a little hazy and a little foggy so it's not going to be just a, a sharp edged uh, shape that I'm painting it's it has some fuzziness to it now I'm going to add a little more green to my mixture as I start to get closer to where I'm at and uh, still trying to keep it a little hazy a little foggy uh, a, a lot of the mountainous uh, uh, sh areas, the mountain tops in this area, are very green. So I've painted uh, a, a number of shapes here using some different colors, but I want it to kind of tie together a little bit more and have a little more harmony as I go across it. Um, because of as you get distant, farther in the distance here, things do t have. Uh, less definition and they tend to take on a bluish cast so I'm putting this kind of a blue green wash over this area just to tie it together and, and help make it feel like it's a little little distant but I, I still want that lake uh, to stand out because it, it's picking up the reflection of light in it and um, it, it's uh, you can see that from uh, the viewpoint here where uh, where I was looking Now, as I start to move closer, uh, the, 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 the mountain tops here start to get a little bit more definition, start to get a little darker in value. And uh, in this, this instance here, this is kind of a dark shape. And um, while it's a dark value, I am changing colors uh, within this wash. So I'm using kind of a general purpose brush here. I could, I could use a little bigger brush here. I could use my jumbo round small, um, but I'm doing some color changes here, just from small areas. It's it's kind of hard to to maybe make out in the in the video because it's such a dark value. But there are some subtle changes here with some some blue tones, some violet tones, some slightly kind of olive green tones in this dark wash. Here, as I get a little farther to the right here, and uh, it's kind of getting to this valley area. I'm going to take some clear water and soften that edge, so I transition from that that kind of a hard edge, dark shape into a, a, a kind of a light middle value uh, with a soft gradation on on the right side of it. So here I'm getting to. Uh, the top of a mountain here that was much closer to where I was standing and it's very green and it's hard to to pick that tone up a little bit in this photograph it's still a little hazy but I'm going to to emphasize that uh, green tone a little bit stronger than than it appears in my photograph so I'm I'm painting this rather large green shape here and then uh, I'm going to paint some some shadows on top of it because the the way these uh, mountaintops are, the way the clouds are, you can just see from above here where I'm standing. You can see the shadows crossing uh, all these mountaintops as the clouds pass by. Here I'm going to finish up this green shape. So it's really, it's, it's one large wash here with a fairly even tone, even though I do have some modulation going on in it. I've thoroughly dried the green shape. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to paint uh, really the, the edge that is right uh, on the, the area that I'm standing. So this is really the foreground area here and it's just this kind of a rocky surface uh, that lays right before me before you look over it into the valley into the distant mountains and I'm painting this with a, a raw umber mixture that has a little royal blue and and some that has a little bit of lizard and crimson in it um, so I, I, I sometimes when I'm working with this mixture I'll get 
uh, a mixture has a bit of a cool cast to it and then, then other times it'll have a reddish warmer tone to it. So I've thoroughly dried this and I want to create a little texture in this area that's right here in the foreground that's right in front of me where I'm standing. So I'm going to protect some of those areas. I'm going to take a coarse spray. So this is a different spray bottle. It just has a coarse spray. And I'm just going to spritz some water on top of this uh, kind of raw umbra area. And then I'm just going to rub it with a Kleenex. And you can see that I get a bit of a texture there on that uh, shape. As I mentioned, you can see these shadows as the clouds pass over. Um, the, the, the shadows get cast on the tops of these mountains that you can see from above, um, from Mount Washington. So here I'm, I'm taking my um, Jumbo Round small brush and it's loaded up actually with kind of a, a deep violet mixture that I'm putting on top of this green uh, to indicate the, the shadows that are being created by these passing clouds. As I apply this, I'm, I'm working wet on dry, but my brush is fully loaded with paint. It's a saturated brush. So when I make a brush mark, it gives a nice coverage and I have to come back and scrub it to, to try and get full coverage on my paper. Because uh, this is so close, uh, you, you do get some harder edges, but um, I'm still gonna soften these just a little bit and just give uh, uh, just a little bit of a feeling of uh, uh, a misty, hazy feeling because I still want you to, to realize that you're still up high in these mountains. And while some of these are, are still very clear, there's still some areas that um, are a, a little uh, less defined and, and uh, have softer edges, but you can start to get a little bit more of a misty feeling still rolling through the kind of that the valley there as that that part descends down into a valley. So this area here in the foreground that's kind of a, a raw umber, uh, a dark brown tone, um, is is a uh, a very hard, uh, rocky surface. And uh, while I've painted it as a large shape, just as I have these other areas, this one has uh, uh, more uh, visible contours and form to it because it is a, a rocky surface that really I'm standing on as I, uh, I, I took this picture. So now I need to help make this feel a little bit more like a, a, a rock, a rocky surface. So I'm putting in a dark value here. So this is some raw umber with a little bit of royal blue and uh, there'll be some touches with some alizarin crimson in it also. And here you can see that uh, I've gotten much darker with my wash and I've covered the majority of this shape, leaving just peaks of the kind of the lighter middle value. And now I'm spraying it with fine mist spray. And I'm gonna take my uh, scraping tool and I'm going to just give a little bit more clarity to the contours of this kind of rocky surface by scraping uh, the, some, some edges and some uh, flat contours into this shape. So now that I've painted some of these darker values, I've decided that I still want to go darker under the base of these clouds. So this is probably the fourth or fifth time that I've gone back and, and darkened that. But you need to compare as your painting evolves and make decisions based on uh, what you see. And, and in this instance, I wanted this uh, the value underneath the, the, the base of these clouds to be a little closer to some of these dark values mm -hmm. Uh, on the, these mountaintops where the shadows are being cast by these clouds and just help them relate a, a, a little bit better, I think, to uh, the shadows that are being cast. When I put in my green wash, I went a little too far. When I originally drew this composition, I had extended this, this rocky area in the foreground 
all the way to the left and off the page. So I'm going to change this a little bit by taking a dark wash and extending that rocky shape across. And that's uh, closer to what I was after. I'm going to put a white mat on this and get a good look at it. And remember, I started with the soft shapes first, the soft cloud shapes, and then I painted in the blue sky, and then I kind of worked from the background forward. I hope you enjoyed this. If you do want the reference material for this, you can find it on the YouTube reference link on the top of my Online Learning Center homepage. And if you have questions about my materials, you can go to the studio page of my website, rsurwitzart.com. If you have questions, you can email me at rsurwitzart at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.